Well, welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week we are away off the farm and we are just going over our farm plan for the year. As we do every year, we try and escape in October just to kind of lay out the next coming year and right before um, all of our Christmas and holiday stuff kind of starts pounding us because we do a lot of um, winter production on the farm and so this is just a week that we take and it's right after Emma's wedding and we had all those big weddings last couple weeks so it's just a nice little break that we can get away. We're down here in Southern Oregon at Lake of the Woods and there is a lunar eclipse happening right now. So it's a little bit dark. We didn't come to see that, but um, it's just gonna be kind of fun to experience um, the lunar eclipse here at the little cabin. So we're just gonna sit down with you today and talk about the farm plan, what we've got going, and um, just kind of what's on the horizon for you guys, especially. We have some exciting things coming down the pike. We would love to have you be a part of our family here at Crowley House. And so we're designing a few things that will be coming down the pike very soon. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We have Riley here with us as well. And she's gonna talk a little bit about weddings and designing and how it went last year her thoughts about it we're going to talk a little bit about flower farming in general as a family um, and how that shaped who we are and how we do it a lot of people ask us like how do you work as a family together and just you know answer a few questions as far as like would you start a flower farm now I mean I don't know there's a lot of people doing it so uh, anyways I'm glad you're here joining us and um, on this lunar eclipse day <laughs> I think it's supposed to get kind of dark it's already kind of gotten a little bit darker than this morning when I got up. So anyways, I'm glad you're here. Okay, so Riley and I thought we would go through just some of the farmer floors questions that we get a lot. Um, and I think the reason we're doing this is just kind of an introductory to our, we're gonna go ahead and start a Patreon, partly because Goodness. we feel like um, we could do, um, we're gonna do two levels. One is just, you know, uh, to be part of the Crowley House family. Um, it's going to come with a little package of seeds, a sticker, and um, just a little welcome letter, welcome into our community here at Crowley House. So that's just kind of a little supportive group. And then we're gonna have another level, which is going to be the Crowley House College is what Riley's calling it. I just was throwing out names and Beth's like, that's the one. That's it. <laughs> Write that down. That's a good one. Um, so at Crowley House College, so what we were thinking along those lines, we get a lot of uh, messages on Instagram and on YouTube just, and people emailing us just some questions as far as like the mechanics of what we do and how we do things. So we felt like we would do some sort of educational piece because as you know, for the most part, our, um, our channel is a vlog channel for sure. It's it's more of just a, in the life and the day of, of a flower farmer. And the reason we started that way was just so that folks could just have a kind of an understanding of like what it takes to run a full-time farm 
mm -hmm. um, full-time incomes uh, for three and a half, four or five people. So this is kind of, so we thought, well, we just, you know, elaborate on that and then have another Patreon tier that would do a monthly type video that was an educational video really fine-tuning some of the the things that we do so that's kind of what what the intentions behind what we're doing you know it it is um there's a lot to filming on youtube um putting out good content and we um, my son brayden is the editor so he does all the editing of the videos i have the i'm behind the camera riley's behind the camera emma's behind the camera Jason's behind the camera. There's all of us grab the camera basically to make it work. And um, we pay Brayden. He, that's his full time job for the most part. He's going to college right now, but that's what his job is. He does all the editing, and we really strive to put out good content, not just something that you're wasting your time. Uh, hopefully. I mean, that's our. We're learning still, so it's, you know, there's rough patches. It's the least semi mediocre. <laughs> it's semi mediocre, but we're learning and, um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. With Our that. Fire's going out. So with that, um, we will be releasing fairly shortly a, um, the Patreon. We're not ready to do it yet. Um, we're still putting that all together, but we thought we would at least invite you. So to be looking forward to something like that in the future, which actually will probably be in the next couple weeks. So, um, since we're sitting here chatting with you, one of the questions we got is, is, um, Bloom and Good Time podcast coming back? Answer is no. <laughs> what? Yes, it is. Um, we don't know in what form yet. As you know, Emma has just tied the knot. She so we're trying to, um, figure out how we want to do it going forward um, with Emma's time and our time and just now that it's finally slowing down, we can really, really think about that. So on that note, the podcast is going to be starting up pretty soon. And what we're thinking to do is probably a seasonal podcast and it will be during our slower months. So we are going to be doing um, winter, fall, winter, early spring. And then in the high season when we're doing so many weddings, it's just kind of ridiculous for us to try and do a podcast every single week. Mm -hmm. Um, but our goal is this to continue on with that. And it's more of a, just a really good time chatting with girlfriends. But really, if you guys have anything you want us to discuss or any topics to talk about, let us know. Yeah. Leave us a comment below I can't believe, on that. I'm thinking about like last year about the podcast and how in October we did a whole month of spooky things and this so year fun. we've nothing we've nothing what yeah. the heck so when Emma gets back from her um, honeymoon honeymoon we're gonna go ahead and nail a few podcasts down we'll probably get a whole bunch done in a row so she's gonna be still working with us actually which is really cool but um, yeah. I just don't know if it's gonna be full-time or she's just gonna work part-time but we are definitely gonna start up with the um, podcast mm -hmm. Something will happen. So we will let you know. I know you follow along with us um, on a Blooming Good Time Instagram. So that would be really cool. Okay, so what are your questions that you got from people on Instagram? Well, one was the okay. podcast. We talked about that. Yeah, the podcast. Sorry, we had to move. We had to move. We had guests like, arrive. You can't see it, but there's a mountain back here. <laughs> no, we'll show you. Okay, so um, I think some of the questions, like what is the, the look for the farm going forward as far as um, animals? Definitely cows. I want cows. I really do want a goat, but I don't know if I'm mentally ready. Yeah, you want a milking goat. I do. I would be so much fun to make cheese. Yeah, I think we... Um, cheese! So this year we have about 50 ponderosa pines that need to go in, and we're planting it in the back where we have... Um, we're taking out all the roses, right? Yeah, we're taking out all the roses that are back there. That's crazy. And there's a whole bunch of peonies back there too. Yeah. So we're taking those out and we're gonna actually put in some cattle. So we have probably... I have a question before we move forward. Us taking out all of those roses, because how many roses are back there? Like what, 500? Something like that. Something like, there's 500 roses and then you would say like maybe 100 peony plants back there. Plus we, ha there's we have another 
like probably 200 sitting in our yard of peony plants. Do you feel like a little sad about that? About them like us removing all of those and then do you feel like it's like been a waste of money or like do you regret it at all? We planted those in 2020. So it has been three years. So has there been no, enough I, profit I totally, off those three I, years? Yeah, I've totally made my money off of them. I made my money off of them the first year we cut on them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like our business has just changed a little bit mm -hmm. where we're doing way more weddings than we are um, wholesale. selling wholesale and yeah we do make quite a bit of money off our roses when we do sell them wholesale but they take a lot mm -hmm. of time and so that's the part that I didn't quite think through when I planted all of them we were at we um, sold at a wholesale that was more of like a co-op we still do but um, we were allotted um, to grow roses and so that's why we put all the roses in yeah. and then as things changed with that wholesale it wasn't the demand that it originally was when we were selling so many of them and so and that's pretty typical to have your business just kind of change and mm -hmm. flow I think the saddest thing about it was that we planted all these um, roses when Emma's dad was alive and with us and so I think for that reason I, I just have, have such good of him yeah planting and falling over he fell over I was just he's just I mean no matter what I love the spirit behind it and so I am gonna keep a few roses um the ones we like the ones we like but we'll probably move them from that back field. yeah and I I will just always remember that I think that's the sad part about it I think there's gonna be a lot of work going into the farm this year in moving things around like yeah. again we're getting rid of a lot of roses um, not just in the backfield, but also near the house. We have another, we have two clumpings of roses that just need to, they're not producing what they need to be anymore. And they're just not in the space we want them to be anymore. So we're going to be getting rid of a lot of them and, um, probably replacing them with stuff that we love more and are going to use more. We've already been doing that a lot with a lot of David Austin's. We've gotten a couple collections of David Austin's that we use a lot and so we've continued to buy them and those are always going to like really they're um an old variety so they're always they're not going to give us as much trouble as Hopefully newer not. ones like we, we've grown a lot of David Austin's and I really enjoy growing them yeah. so therefore I am going to continue growing some I feel of like those. the new ones like Coco Locos those just eventually they um they go back to their uh, original breeding right well they just send up a lot of suckers and so that's yeah. that's the we just had some struggle with a couple mm -hmm. of varieties that we're going to be pulling out 100 percent. and honestly i feel like the coco logos i love them i still do but i do think they're starting to go a little out of style or like yeah. out of demand we didn't definitely didn't get Did not demand. sell as many along with the like pompous grass we didn't get a lot of demand for which that thank either. you we did get that. A, we did get demand for uh just grasses in general I love a grass. lot of grasses but not a lot the of cosmos pump. i want to grow more maybe next cosmos year. was a big hit um, um, this fall for sure Anyways, yeah. so we're going to be putting some cattle in the back, um, and th that we're really excited about. I think we're going to go, I'll have Jason talk a little bit more about that, but I think we're going to do some Dexters, I'm not totally for sure, we're gonna have little partly babies. because they're small. I'm so excited to have cows. I've always wanted a cow because I feel like they're puppies in giant form. Yeah, we did have sheep for many years, and we really do like it, enjoy having sheep mm -hmm. and, and having lamb in the I freezer. I loved having pigs. Pigs were fun too, except for we got a little attached to ours. And so we're not going to do that again, I don't think. But we are going to do sheep and Riley would really like a goat. We're just not sure if we're ready for that. And like mm -hmm. I said, I have all these ponderosas that we need to plant in the back. We're kind of creating like a hedgerow along the fence line on the south side um, that oh, is just going to kind of create a wind break for the animals and just a little more. I used to have a lot of wooded... Um, um, hawthorn and some poplars and they've been not doing as well this year so we're gonna just we were given all these beautiful ponderosas so we're gonna go ahead and put those in this fall very excited I'm a little yeah. forest we do need more chickens laying hen lay uh-huh oh. laying hens we need more laying hens Ours have just reached the point where they've just piddled out, so we're going to be getting some more of those this spring. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to get a couple more ducks. We've lost a couple, so we have two. <laughs> I love having ducks, but oh my goodness, I feel like 
that is their sacrificial breed on the farm. They just die all the time. They do. They're just kind of dumb. But yeah. They wander the farm and eat the slugs, and I do like them for mm. that reason. So we're going to get some more of those. Brayden really wants a goose. He does want a goose. And Which I'm a little skeptical on. Um, so that's kind of what's going to happen. Um, I felt like the garden in itself, like the veg garden, did pretty good for you this year. You I guys, a lot. Oh, my gosh. My first year of veg farming or gardening. I don't think it's farming. It's very much gardening. It's more gardening. I thrived. I think I pat myself on the back because I did a great success this year. Mm -hmm. uh, my cucumber crop, fantastic. So fantastic. In fact, we never pickled them because <laughs> we, we didn't have them. time. We didn't have time. We, we didn't have time. I Yeah. I love them. Oh, my gosh. If anybody else, I love the Boston cucumber is the pickling cucumber is the variety I grew and I had so many like they were just like more and more every day they were delicious and I'm sure they would have been great pickles yep. <laughs> but we never got to those um, I also grew a Japanese cucumber variety that was my favorite cucumber ever now so delicious also oh my gosh we'll do that again i want to grow more um parisian snacking cucumbers those were also amazing yeah they did really well for you um i really liked those the green beans we did a second planting of our green beans and they are so good and also i planted like one or maybe one or two dill plants and then i let them self-seed and now i have so much dill coming back and i'm really excited yeah, because dill it. is expensive and hard to find sometimes and in the I grocery store. I love dill. I love the taste of dill. I love adding it to, like, different things. We can make our own, like, dressing. We should try to make, like, a nice, like, variation of, like, a dill ranch without the dairy. Right. Because the lactose is real. Um, yeah. So we actually put in three more raised beds for the garden, and then we're going to be putting in a couple more for some raspberry plants that we need to get in the ground mm -hmm. desperately because they've been sitting in our little nursery pots. For like um, two years. And then as far as like the garden went, I felt like we did really, really well. Um, we're setting up our farm to run a little bit differently this coming year, and we kind of started on it this year. Um, we're just switching gears a little bit and just we do a lot of weddings and we have we don't need to do as much wholesale anymore no. so that's the one thing that's different this year is we are doing our mixed bouquet program mm -hmm. and then we're pretty much focusing on weddings and then our um, gardening YouTube content I think so. we're really focusing on more just family homesteading turning the farm into something that's more functional for us not so commercial right. we just don't have the room to either to grow on the scale of the demand there is i think also and it's just it's so backbreaking it eventually like we love love gardening but floral farming in a commercial way is just something that we do not necessarily love i would say like yeah. the greenhouse i think is enough <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, we yeah. grow our side field too, but like, yeah, I like growing enough to just. We grow a lot of different things, and it's nice to be able to share our flowers mm -hmm. with other florists that need a little help or whatever. But for the most part, you know, we need a lot of our product, our own product for our mix, mix bouquet program because we do a lot of bouquets, and then uh, we do use a lot of our product for um, our weddings that we do. So we're just really trying to focus on. And part, I guess, maybe going back to weddings is part of the deal with um, being full-time farmer florist, technically is what mm -hmm. you're called, it requires you to succession plant way more than most, like, commercialized farms, I would say. Yeah. Like, big farms. And a lot of our friends just want to do the big farming, and they've got the acreage for it, and they don't want to do weddings, and that's great. But there's somebody, there's something out there for everybody, so. Next year... I want to be, yeah, I just want to make sure we have the time to, you know, pickle the cucumbers and to plant another row of lettuce and to plant another thing of carrots and use the stuff we're growing because I grew so much this year. We shared a lot of it and a yeah. lot of it we did eat. There were certain things we definitely like more than others. Mm -hmm. We grew a ton of peppers and I don't think we're going to grow that or plant that many. No. We'll probably seed They're starts. They're very fun though. Like I think... We only need really one or two of each of them. Yeah, so we froze a lot of them, and then we'll do something later in the winter for them. Mm -hmm. With them, I want to grow corn. Well, we'll we'll continue the garden conversation, like I said, in some more of the educational um, 
I have no education. I just am making it up as I Patreon. go. Patreon. But it works. <laughs> if there's anything I have to say is when I first wanted to, to like do this, some of my friends said like, oh, but you're not going to be successful at that. Like, you're just going to give up and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I did it. And you know what? I don't know anything about gardening really other than what I know from flower farming. I don't know much about veg gardening. I, there was definitely some fails, like my cucamelons, Mexican gherkins, fail. They did not have enough sun, right? Yeah. And my carrots, kind of a fail. I did have some really good ones at the end of the season. And there was a couple things, like my pumpkins and corn that never got into the ground. And my onions never got into the ground. <laughs> I'm, I look at it as all as a success. I had so many compliments this year on my veg garden. It was absolutely beautiful garden. Um, what I would say is I don't think it's really a fail that you failed at your cucumelons and things like that. But I think what that is, is you, that's how you learn as a gardener is like, like I knew she planted her squash too close together and on the wrong side of the tunnel and you know, things well, like that. Well, first of all, the only one that was trailing was the Italian one. The rest of them were bushing, but I didn't realize it was like that, okay? Anyway. So, but that's how you learn, right? That's and how I we And I don't learn. know if I'm gonna grow that one next year because we didn't eat it. No, we didn't, but it was super fun. We yeah. might eat it. We They're winter storage, so we'll, we'll see. When we get desperate, we'll eat it. I wanna grow, yeah. So Somebody much. said anyway, it's really good, on. so. Okay. Moving on. We're moving on, so. Sorry, I could talk about it all day. Yeah. So we're gonna, next year we are gonna expand that garden a little bit and just devote a little bit more time and because we're not gonna be doing so much wholesaling. Okay, um, so the veg garden, yeah, that did really well. Our flower gardens are getting a huge overhaul and you guys would not believe the amount of stuff we got in. I did, uh, um, did a huge plug order and I did tons of ranunculus anemones growing and starting and so that is something that's going to be coming along really nicely we're getting ready as soon as we get back we're going to be planting our anemones out um they've all come up and sprouted and yeah it's just starting the cycle over so um as far as the flower farming definitely doing more on the way of just growing more for our weddings and events and really really delving into the wedding and event industry a little bit more than we have. really had. cool rhinoculus this year we did we got super some really excited nice about that very marshmallowy yum yum yeah and i think for the educational part i want to do better at just being able to not have to go so fast that i don't get like labels in the ground so i know what varieties they are and um, so I can talk about them and sometimes, you know, especially with dahlias and stuff like that You just get this jumble of a mess and you're just like holy cow um, But Are just we... taking the time to label and then being able to do that and then also I think we want to grow out our storefront a little bit more uh, to be able to offer some of these um, Really cool products that we grow on the farm because we do get a lot of requests for like especially scented geranium um, Is one of the things that we grow a lot of Ranoculus anemones people are always asking for that uh, what are a couple things we're not going to grow this year, Riley? Lysianthus is one of the main ones. We are going to, um, if we do any Lysianthus, we're going to do just a one small section, like one tray. Well, I was talking to a gal at the floral market in Portland, and she was saying that a lot of people in the market, especially, well, she's, we were talking about how the Lysianthus were overdone in the market and how everybody had them and we were both wondering if a lot of people aren't going to grow them next year so are they going to be in demand you know what i mean we used all of our lysianthus for our events we didn't sell any of them wholesale no. this year we just the demand for them was there um but we just yeah, don't like I don't, growing them i struggle growing them i there. love growing mums and that's a big crop for us mm -hmm. and we're the only ones that does that really so we do really so if really we're not well. gonna grow lizzie's what are we gonna grow instead because that's like a block know. also we did an experiment of trying to do a fall crop of sweet peas i feel like it kind of failed yeah a little bit i but don't know I don't if know i did if that well or not i don't know if it's because it failed or if it's because we also grew love in a puff and the love in a puff kind of like ate it alive because mm -hmm. the ones outside we have the sweet peas outside those are fantastic yeah they look great and they've looked great all um summer long 
they're still producing and mm. that's really cool. So we might do, we are going into a little bit more of um, some sweet pea production. Are we gonna do two rows next year, you think? We have so many sweet peas, guys. Oh. One of our beautiful, beautiful watchers and listeners and everything, she was from England, right? Yes, she got us so, she smuggled so many <laughs> seeds for us. So this year we're definitely gonna have a very large sweet pea crop and I'm hoping I'm so to excited. be able to have some seeds to share with our um, viewers because you know, I, I don't necessarily want to start like a full on seed production because there's too many people doing that. Right. Um, but I'd love to have it for our, our Crowley House family, which includes you guys. So um, that's kind of cool. And there's just a few other things. Um, as far as, um, so somebody asked us a question, getting back to a few questions, but um, somebody asked us what foliage is if, as a new gardener to grow. Um, we kind of made a little bit of a list, but one of them is nine bark, um, makes for a really great foliage. There's a green one and a burgundy one. Mahogany Splendor is a good one in the summertime. Snow on the mountain is great as long as you cut it with gloves and let it, the sap kind of drip out because the sap can burn your skin and face and eyes. So make sure you're careful with that one, but that one's a great foliage. Um, smoke bush. Smokebush is really is nice. Really cool. What hypericum berry? Yeah, hypericum berry. There's also a variety of snowberry that I really like. I don't know the name. I know Charles Little grows it. Yeah. Um, I just used it in two weddings and it was amazing, especially in the fall because it kind of turns that beautiful, like, rosy, goldy color. I really enjoyed using that. Um, Cenadranium is always a staple, and then we eucalyptus. Also, eucalyptus is a staple, always a staple. And then we also have like um, Dusty Miller. Mm -hmm. and oh, what's that one that we cut with the flowers, and they have the little berries that are blue in the winter? Oh, um, viburnum. Viburnum, <laughs> yes. So there is all kinds of viburnums, and any. Uh, I mean, some of them uh, aren't good for cuts, but a lot of them are. Like the mm -hmm. snowball viburnum mm -hmm. is really good, and the um, early spring. It's got the big puff balls on it. Fills a bouquet really nicely. Viburnum New Dawn is a good one. Uh, there is Viburnum Bouquet, I think it's called. So there's a whole bunch of different ones. And then there is, um, what's some other foliages that are easy to grow? Um, uh, you know, peony foliage is great. Yeah. Peony. Especially in the fall. Uh, sometimes we use apple whips <coughs> when the apple whips come on and we need to get rid of the little suckers. We'll use that. Um, but yeah, the, the viburnums I would buy hand, by far are some of the ones. Blueberry. Blueberry's awesome. That's oh, a yeah. great one. And any of the thornless raspberry or blackberry is mm. great as well. And you also produce fruit on that, which is a nice cut and goes into bouquets. And I, I look at it as a filler. So those yeah. are all great ones for us. Those are our staples. Yes. So somebody asked us a little bit about like if we would do a little more canning and cooking on the show. And we are definitely planning to do that. It takes a little bit of planning to get that all coordinated well. So a Obviously, lot of times we didn't have time to make pickles. So no, but Jason does cook a lot. And so if I can grab the camera, he grabs the camera and we just kind of show what we're doing. Um, but that takes a whole nother skill set as far as printing out the re the recipes and making sure everything's there. So that's that's the part that we're just trying to get down. Uh, because, you know, we do enjoy cooking and using what we have from the garden. And um, we are planning on going to the Homesteader Conference in June oh, I was going to say, that was really fun. Yeah, we really enjoyed it as a Good family. Good family bonding. Yeah, I don't know if we'll have a booth this year. Last year we had a booth with my book. But Is it going to be in Idaho again? Yes. And so we were going to try and make it to that. So we need to make sure not schedule any weddings. Uh, so we might just go just to go and be a part of it. We'll probably do some volunteering or something again, but we won't run the show like we did last. Not run the show. I should say we kind of, we ran the show. <laughs> no, we didn't, <laughs> but it was really, really fun. Um, I'm really interested to see how it develops. Yeah. Or come and see us. Come to the West coast. Farms homesteading conference. We don't have a homesteading conference. No, in the, Oregon. No, 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 in Idaho. Oh yeah, come see us in Idaho. Like we Gosh. might have a booth. We haven't decided yet. Um, it would just be like we literally. We sold a lot of books. We I sold a lot say. of books. Dried flower bouquets, and um, so if, honey. So, so many honey sticks. Yeah. So if we can get our branding 
a little bit better, and then we will do another booth. We just kind of filled in with a booth, but I feel like our branding's pretty on brand. Yeah. Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I think that was pretty much all the questions. Now, um, like you said, going forward, we're going to be doing some more educational bits. And I should put education out on our YouTube channel because our YouTube channel will probably do better. But I don't know. <laughs> we're not very educationally. No, but I feel like with our um, Patreon video, so what's going to happen is uh, we want it really affordable for folks, um, but we want to be able to offer some of those educational bits that we don't, we don't, you know, like we think it's kind of boring to show you all the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of show you like the romantic side of what we do. So we're going to delve into a little bit more of the nitty gritty and chunk things out that we do a little bit more. I mean, my job is very romantic. Your job Even is. in the gritty. Yeah. I so, don't, I'm not very good at explaining it though. Yeah. So we're going to take purposeful videos and um, educational videos for the Patreon. So that's going to be kind of fun. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to do a lot. Yeah. We're going to kill it. Okay, I think that's it for now. I think that's all. Is there any, like, personal goals not having to do with, like, work or the farm or anything? Is there any personal goals you have? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Thanks. Um, well, I think my personal goal is still staying the same as far as really trying to get my health really on point. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good, but... I need to continue working forever and ever and ever. So, um, we really need to hone in on that then, especially with, yeah. So, um, part of the reason we put all these raised beds in is, um, I've just had a lot of issues with some, you know, failing fifties started in and it wasn't fun. So no, no longer 30 flirty and thriving. Nope. No longer that. So I am just working on trying to get to the gym, um, mm -hmm. as much as I can eating mm -hmm. super, super healthy, eliminating sugar, pretty much all gluten, sugar, dairy, suckage diet. So no, but like that could be fun still. Yeah. But what about you? My personal goals similar. Um, I'm alone now. <laughs> <laughs> Emma is no longer with Riley. Emma is no longer living with they me. They broke up. We did. Uh, <laughs> not, no, we're still friends. It's just, you know. She, You're friends and cousins. She has more important things to do, like a husband. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, I understand. It's just, I thought I was important. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally joking. Yeah, same thing. I want to really focus on myself. Um, my goal is really focus on my health get that all under control really feel good about myself do some self loving you know redecorate i'm doing a lot of stuff in the yurt which is kind of fun i have a lot of projects in there it's chaos right now because i haven't had time to do anything about it since oh, we've had so many weddings and i'm just like throw it on the ground throw it on the ground yeah i um, guess maybe that's one of my things too is just to follow through with things and staying organized not yeah. throwing it on the ground Shh. like that was one of my things is I'm mm -hmm. working on trying not to do that. Um, also, just like being a girl's girl, being supportive of each other, not like putting others down and just being really positive. Um, really trying to focus on doing more with more people, too. Um, I love throwing parties, as we know. So I really want to like throw some parties for some younger girls from like our church and like just doing more fun things like that. Reading more. Which I don't know how I could read more, but like, you know, I really want to try to read 100 books next year. I think I could do it. I buy a lot of books and sometimes I don't follow through, and so I'm just trying to follow through. You don't read more. ever. I don't have a lot of time to do that, and I, so I don't I've have been a lot trying of time. to use like Audible and then mm -hmm. read at night instead of being on the computer on my that's phone. What I do. So that's what I'm trying to do. Although I have been really into Gilmore Girls lately, that's a new obsession. I started watching Gilmore Girls, and I feel like it's just the vibes of fall and of having a good time. Um, yeah, that's my personal goals. So that's kind of it in a nutshell as far as our farm, but um, we just wanted to sit down and kind of give you an update of what is going on in the farm. Yeah, we've just been working together as a family, uh, which has been really good. Braden does all the editing. Jason is does a lot of the farm aspect of things um, when he's home. He's gone a lot. 
and then uh, Riley and I have just running the business end of things and doing all the design work design work and that kind of thing so killing it guys we are killing it this next year is going to be kind of interesting how it all plays out I think this time of year we always reflect back really um, that's why we get away on a place like this mm -hmm. just to reflect back on on the farm and what we did well and what we didn't and then moving forward what we're gonna do a little bit different and how we're gonna make it all work so but I mm -hmm. feel like we did really good this year yeah this we did year. really really well this year and I felt there wasn't a lot of negatives about it but I do I have been asked quite a bit to do some educational things and I don't really want to add that to just our normal channel I just want to be able to offer that to people that really want the nitty gritties and the under the under parts yes yes okay the nittiest and grittiest. so that is it for now and um, yeah so we um, look forward to you joining us um, here at Crowley House as a Patreon if you want to. That would help our channel grow and us be able to offer some really cool stuff eventually over time. Yeah. Swag bags. I mean, we're already cool stuff. Yeah, we are. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. We would love to have you here. Give us a big thumbs up and let us know in the comments what you think or what you'd like to hear or educational wise, what you'd like to us to do. Um, we are always looking for great feedback. So love all right. you. Love you. Bye. Bye. So Beth, tell me, how did you find the time to do everything we do and also Write a write book. A book. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thankfully, my sister Sarah was able to write with me, and she did an amazing job. She's a really good writer and has a lot more, um, or just different time than I do. So she wrote a lot, and I wrote some uh, for the book, but it was kind of a process. It's quite a lengthy process. And I didn't realize you don't really start at the beginning and write to the end. You jump around and that makes it really, really difficult. Uh, we were asked to do a book by, um, Bloom and Print. We had a small blog that we started together. Um, uh, my sisters and I just kind of writing while my, um, my oldest sister, Mary, was losing her husband Wayne at the time from cancer and so we thought it was a good outlet for all of us girls to kind of have something that we did together and so that's kind of how it started but um, it was a super easy process with Bloom and Print they are an amazing um, super easy publisher to work with and um, Deborah and Robin over there uh, just amazing team um, so anyways I couldn't say anything better about it Writing a book is very different than what you think, I think, in your head, or at least I did. Uh, it came out great, but very difficult journey. Mm. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. It's a process. Okay, sure. so someone asked us how we balance gardening, flower farming, and homesteading. Is it sustainable? It's sustainable, but I don't know how we do it. <laughs> kind of like, how do you have a baby? You just do it. It's something that you definitely have to have in your mindset that this is important to our family and this is what we're doing. I definitely have to like take days where I'm like, this is what I'm doing today. And like, especially like if I don't have weddings that week, I have more time then to like work on the farm and like do the gardening and all that fun stuff. And I think it is a mindset. It is, it's a lot of work, you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's definitely a mindset that you have to work with because um, it is a ton of work and mm -hmm. you have to just make it a priority. Everybody works on the farm, the whole family, right? Yeah. Uh, everybody has their jobs and everybody's responsible for things. I think that's what helps me the most is that giving each person a responsibility. Riley's in charge of the vegetable gardening. Uh, Jason's in charge of processing vegetable gardening along with me. Um, we, uh, Braden's in charge of um, afternoon chores. Jason's in charge of morning chores. Riley and I fill in the gaps where we can um, mm -hmm. and then we just run the flower farming aspect of it so there's that I don't know I I do think it's sustainable I don't know you know if you just design your homestead your farm around and your gardens around what you can do then you're not going to feel so overwhelmed I guess it mm -hmm. starts small and then you add slowly and then it becomes more of a thing where it's in your wheelhouse then to do it all because in the beginning when you're learning everything it takes you so much time um, to do it all and then you just kind of learn over time right mm -hmm. it's kind of like flower farm we don't really think about it anymore we don't 
plan too much. We just wing it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we Definitely do plan. a lot of winging. We're leaving I'm... now, so bye to the mountains. Goodbye to the lake. And Goodbye. Yeah. We we're will, heading home. Yeah, we'll do another questionnaire. And like I said, we're going to be diving more in depth on some of these in our Patreon um, subscriptions. And I don't know why you're patting my head. Because I love you. Ah! And it, yes, the podcast is coming back. It's coming back. I'm blowing a tie. <laughs> okay, see you there.